Well, good morning. My name's Tom, and I'm glad you're here on this Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So, last week, after service, I go out to lunch with my wife, which I normally do on Sundays anyway, and, and I, some, some days, some Sundays uh, more than others, but I kind of debrief the message and use her as a sounding board if I, you know, oh, I forgot to tell him the secret of life, uh, you know, those kind of things. And last week I was doing that, and, and what I was wrestling with was, man, that message was just so simple. Just, I mean, what was the big idea, you ask? Oh, yeah, love, love like Jesus loved. I mean, how many times have we heard that in church? You know, love God, love people, or, or what would Jesus do? Last week, the, the question that we're supposed to ask ourselves when we live life is what would, what would love do? And it's such a simple message that I was wrestling with that, that maybe some of us walked away from service on Sunday and would be like, well, why doesn't he tell me something I don't already know? And it's simple you know, you guys love, love people, love God, love people. But at the same time, it's, it's hard it, it, because we do come into the, this world, as Pastor Andrew was saying, we come into this world selfish. And, and so what we've been learning as we receive the Holy Spirit, as we walk with the Holy Spirit, we're no longer inward focused, but we become outward focused. We become otherly focused is what we're what we're trying to have happen in this, in this life that we're living. And so we gather on Sundays. We come together expecting the Holy Spirit to do something special. And at the same time, we, we should also expect that maybe the Holy Spirit wants to do something through us for other people. We had two Two people that gave a prophetic word this morning. So the Holy Spirit tapped them on the shoulder and said, I'm going to give you a word, but I want you to share it with everyone. Well, that might happen, that might happen to you D during a Sunday morning. And what a safe, safe place. This is a safe place for us to kind of step out and try these things. And, you know, we, and we love each other and, and, and we help each other grow. Would you agree this is a safe place? Amen. If you don't think so, just get out of here because we're, <laughs> this is an angry place all of a sudden. No, it's not angry. Okay, so that brings us to, <clears throat> that brings us to our text this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now what we've been doing, we've been going through 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and today we start 14 because these three chapters are the best three chapters that that are in the Bible, as far as I know, and the things that I'm reading, that tell us what a spirit-filled person looks like. It tells us what a spirit-filled church looks like. And so we've just been going through this because we want to be that kind of church. We want to be a we want to be a spirit-filled church, and we want to do the things that we're supposed to do, as this is God's original plan that His Holy Spirit would live live in us. And, and work through us. So 1 Corinthians 14, starting at verse 1, says, Pursue love and desire special gifts, but especially that you prophesy. For he who speaks with tongues does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking in tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation by knowledge, by prophecy, or by teaching. Lord Jesus, 
teach us this morning what it is that, that we're supposed to know, that will help us be a, a spirit-filled church, that will help us be spirit, spirit-led uh, and be able to put, switch our minds to the things of the spirit. As we're walking through this life on this earth. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so where do I start? Well, I'd like to start where I ended last week. I don't know if you were here or not last week, but in last week's message, Paul said, okay, where there, where there are tongues, where there are prophecies, where there are words of knowledge, they're going to stop. They're going to cease. And, and then in this passage of Scripture that I just read to you, it, it told us to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. Wait a second. You know what's going on? Well, Paul is telling us that even though prophecies, tongues, knowledge will cease in the next age, we talked about that last, that last week, in the millennial age, they will cease. We're to continue to desire them in this age. He's, he's making that real clear to us. Now, I tried to get us some revelation on those two words, pursue and desire. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. The best I could do, the word pursue love, pursue is, is more of an outward uh, action or moving physically or following it. That word, to, uh, you know, as I looked at the Greek and and looked at Blue Letter Bible, what it, what it was talking about, that word, seemed more outward action-ish, pursue love. So, you know, if somebody's cold and hungry, for you to say, oh, be warmed and filled and keep on walking wouldn't be love. But if, if we're pursuing love, we give them some food and a blanket. Okay, it's an action. And, and then uh, desire spiritual gifts, that one is a, seems to be more of an internal internal motivation to desire one of the words that that were given to describe this is to envy envy does uh, envy spiritual gifts and so there you go that's the best i could do uh, but then the 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 last part of that first sentence is that we are to especially especially pursue especially desire prophecy now, this is something, in case you don't know, this is something that's talked about in the Old Testament that's coming. Moses hinted to it. He's, he says that uh, all the Lord's people were prophets. Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, or that all the, uh, the people uh, were prophets and the Lord would put his spirit on them. This is Moses kind of hinting at a time in history this is going to happen. And then in, in the book of Joel Joel 2, 28 and 29, he comes right out and prophesies exactly that the spirit of the Lord is going to be on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Now, this is 900 years before the day of Pentecost, give or take 100 years. And so, and so I'm going to go ahead and read all of what Peter says on the day of Pentecost because he's just repeating Joel. And this is what this is what Peter says when the Holy Spirit finally arrives and rests on all people. He says, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. That's the that's the age we're living in right now. We we're in the age. So at at Pentecost, we talked about that many weeks ago. That was the ending of the old covenant and the beginning of the new covenant. And we could look at we could we could look at it, the Old Testament, the Bible. In the Bible, there's the Old Testament, and the New Testament. There's the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And if we're not, if we don't remember that what has taken place because of this New Covenant, then we will 
we will gravitate in our thinking toward the Old Covenant. And in the Old Covenant, there were a few prophets that could hear from the Lord, and then they would talk to the masses. That's the way that it was in the Old Covenant. We don't live in the Old Covenant. We live in the New Covenant because Jesus Christ left heaven, came to earth, was crucified on the cross, shed his blood to pay the penalty for our sins, died, was put in a grave for three days. He rose on the third day. He's alive. He has power over sin and death. He has risen. And so because of what he's done, those that place their trust in him now have the Holy Spirit. And so they too can prophesy in the new covenant. All Christians can prophesy. Go ahead and turn to the person sitting next to you and say, prophesy, prophet. <laughs> now, let's not go by that too quickly. Do you believe that? Do you believe that all Christians can prophesy? Or just Pastor Tammy and Sandy? Yeah. If, if all Christians have the Holy Spirit, then all, all Christians can prophesy. Now, I know in this passage of Scripture, it talks about speaking in tongues, and I hate to just skip right, I hate to skip over that, because I wished you all spoke in tongues, and, and uh, um, says that in there, which is to infer that we all can speak in tongues, in my opinion, but the focus this morning is on this idea of prophecy, so we're going to just skip to verse 3 there. It says, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. <clears throat> now, my guess is many, I don't know about many, especially first service. I mean, you guys got up early, came to church. But some, we'll say some, but probably many people, when you, when you say, when you talk about prophecy or when you talk about a prophet, they're going to think, oh, somebody that tells something that's going to happen in the future. You know, like a fortune teller. Oh, that's what a prophet is, a fortune teller. Now, this verse I just read said, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now, in the, in the New Covenant or in the New Testament, in the New, New Covenant, there are... If the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can tell us something that's coming in the future, and 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 we can, we can say that. But most of the time, New Testament, when I say everyone can prophesy, I'm talking about most of the time it's going to be edification, exhortation, and comfort. And sometimes those those come in different in different ways. That may be a foretelling of the future in a general type way. Tammy told me the other night she was, at, um, she was working late because they have the, the kids come back to school. She works for the West Valley School District, so she was there late. And the janitor showed up, and, and he starts janitoring. And <clears throat> it's a word. <clears throat> and uh, so he asked Tammy, how, well, how come you're here so late? And she's like, well, it's the beginning of school. I've got a lot of, a lot of forms, a lot of stuff I've got to get done. And so, so he said... Um, to her, you're the right person for the job. Now, beforehand, she was frustrated and tired because something wasn't coming, and he said, you're the right person for the job. Now, I don't know if he's a Christian. I don't know if that's a prophecy or not, but let me tell you, it was, it was edifying. Edifying means the, is the act of building or to build up, exhorting, urge one to use some course of conduct, exhortation, and then comfort means... You know, we all know what comfort is or, or encourage. After he said that you're the right person, person for the job, she was, she was built up. She was edified. And she was comforted. I, uh, I've received a, a lot of prophecies. Some, some more formal than others. Some, some come to me and people will say, the Lord told me to tell you type thing. That's what I mean by more formal. <clears throat> but often, it, it, 
you know, you might not even think of it as a prophecy. You might just think of it as, a, as an encouraging thing. Diane Norman, many of you know Diane Norman. She passed away a couple months ago or so, maybe a month ago. But she would, she, it seemed like she would always text me or, or uh, call me or shoot me an email or something and communicate something that was an encouraging you know, uh, something, you know, just simple, like, you know, the, uh, you're going to make it, you know, God's given you what, uh, the giftings that you need to be the great pastor that you are, something like that. So some of the times we might be thinking that we're just really a nice person to say nice things to people. But when we dig a little bit deeper, that could be the Holy Spirit inside of us directing to us to say something to somebody that's encouraging and edifying them. There was one time I was, I think it was my first or second night as a youth, as uh, the, one of the youth leaders. So I wasn't the youth pastor guy. I was one of the youth leaders. And this particular night, they had a guest speaker in. And this guy was, uh, this guy was really good at uh, prophesying. So in the scripture that I read this morning, I want us to know all Christians can prophesy. And then there's, there's a, a spirit of prophecy comes upon us. There's a mantle of prof. You know, there's like the fivefold ministry talks about one of those is the prophet. That, so uh, there's, we'll say there's different levels. Well, this guy was pretty good at prophesying, right? So uh, he taught for a little bit, and then he said, if you want to get a prophetic word, stand up. So about half the people stood up, and then Reagan Couch, the youth pastor, was like, everybody stand up. You're all getting a word. <laughs> now, if you know Reagan, you know exactly that's just the guy he was. You're all getting a word. <clears throat> so this guy just started going right around in, in an order. I was about the fourth guy. He got to me. You know, my heart's <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. You know, what's he going to say? And, and he said... He, he said uh, in Isaiah 54, 2, it talks about expanding the tent stakes and, and expanding, uh, as you expand the tent stakes, you in, uh, make the tent larger. And, and it says in that same passage of scripture, don't, don't hold back um, because as you expand your tent stakes, God's going to meet you where you are, give you the capacity. So then he asked me, are you starting a new ministry? I'm like, yeah, this is my first night in, in youth ministry as a youth leader. And he was like, oh, well, there you go. And so, so that felt pretty good. You know, God was going to increase my capacity. And he went and he prophesied over a couple other peop students there. And then he came back to me. And he said, the, uh, the Lord just told me that you're going to have a hard year. And, but I want you to know, the, or the Lord wants you to know that he's with you and he's going to comfort you. He wants you to know that other people are going to look to you for, for comfort and encouragement. And, and so just remember that. I was like, well, that one didn't feel as good as the tent stake one. <laughs> So about two weeks later, less than a month later, my sister got in a car accident. A drunk driver um, hit her broadside on the, you know, right on the door that she was, and she died. And that was a very hard year. I'd never grieved the loss of somebody that close before. And so, um, so that was, that was a very very hard year. And but. Going through that year, I remember thinking, <laughs> the Lord told me that was going to happen before it happened through that, through that guy. Well, last week I was telling Tammy about uh, my, you know, this part of the testimony and of the, of the sermon. And, and she said, oh, yeah, I remember, I, I remember such and such story. She told me that story. I was like, oh, would you tell that story on Sunday? She said, yes, she would. So. Good morning. Um, it was still in that same time frame. Maybe a few years later, we were still ministering in the youth group there. 
And thinking about that this morning, I'm like, wow, can you imagine I was ever in a youth group? I mean, look at us. We don't look like we could have ever been in a youth group <laughs> ministering, but we were. And it was really a special time, a healing time for me. Um, just a little backstory is um, I've always dealt with depression, and I feel like that's a generational thing. I can see that coming down through my family line that we've really struggled with depression and um, I see that it really tried to take hold when I was even 12 but I didn't know I didn't have the wisdom to know that it was the lie of the enemy um, that really to take my own life I dealt with a spirit of suicide and even as an 18 year old and you would look at me from the outside, well, she's pretty, she's smart, she's getting married to the hot football player, you know, she shouldn't be depressed or want to die. But I really feel like it was a spirit, but I didn't know what I was dealing with. And as I got into my 20s, I went through counseling, I took antidepressants, and I feel like those were good things, so it were God-given things for my maturity level at that time in my life. But I feel like God... Um, allowed those things not to work any longer for me. And so um, I was really seeking him and his word, renewing my mind through the word of God. And then around early 30s, we had went to a youth conference. And um, we were there, and the speaker said, I want you to stand up and turn around to the person behind you, and I want you to give each other a word. Well, I don't think I'd ever done that before. And so I turned up, turned around, and it was a high school student, a young lady. And she just said uh, Proverbs 3, 5 to me. And it was like I had never heard that verse before. I don't know if I did. It seemed brand new. But it was, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. And I got this picture of like these Freddy Krueger long steel spikes in my head just being removed. And I felt like um, somehow the Holy Spirit had removed that spirit of depression that I had been dealing with for most of my life. And I think that was a start of a new freedom, a new deliverance, just her speaking that scripture. That's all it was, a simple scripture. But the Holy Spirit used that to start to help me to walk in freedom in that area. Good job, Pastor Tammy. <clears throat> there... There are some things that we need to learn. I'm going to just whip through these real quickly. As we're learning to prophesy, and all Christians can prophesy, right? Okay. One of the things, we need to know the character of God. So we learn the character of God. That will help us identify. The next one is learn the voice of God. If we know the character of God, something comes to our mind We'll, we'll know his voice. It helps us also to know our, our own voice. Um, learn to submit to a community of believers. So we're in a safe place right now. We're all trying to help each other learn how it is that we can, that we can um, navigate through this life as spirit-filled believers. So uh, commit to a community of believers. Learn to recognize what God is doing in a service. That becomes important to us as we are trying to step out in faith. Learn to ask whether the word is meant just for you. So, so hopefully every worship service that we have, every church service that we have, at some point, you, a, you know, a light's going to go off in your head and you're going to be like, that was for me. Maybe a lyric of a song, maybe Pastor Andrew Casting vision, receiving the offering, his talk, maybe, you know, bam, that's from, or maybe within the sermon, or maybe within a verse, or maybe what the greeter said to you when, when you came in, or uh, maybe as you're um, going out. Somewhere, at some point in the service, we should all get something from the Lord, 
Um, and when we get something, then we have to say, Lord, is this just for me? Or is this for the whole congregation? And, and so, uh, like this morning, the two gals that gave uh, prophetic words this morning, they were convinced that that was for the whole congregation. And then learn when to stop. Uh, you know, so if, if you have something for the whole church, just give us what the Lord gave you and, and don't continue to ramble. Amen. <laughs> and then the last one, learn to be very careful about directive prophecies. Would have a really hard time telling somebody, yep, you're supposed to buy that house. Yeah, so... I mean, you got to make sure. Um, uh, you got to make sure the Lord is telling you something. Okay, do y'all believe? Do y'all believe that Christians, all Christians, can prophesy? Could I get you to all stand to your feet? <laughs> and I want you to turn around and turn around and get a find a partner. Now you can you can have a partner as your spouse, but then BJ. When you tell her the Lord's saying that the Lord's telling you for her to be nicer to her husband, she's going to be a little suspect about that. So if you want to find uh, somebody that you don't know, this is what we're going to do. And some of you right now, you're like, oh, should have stayed home and watched the Seahawks. <laughs> and that's, hey, that's okay. This is a safe place. And we're just, we're stepping out in faith. This is a safe place. What, I, what we're going to do, we're just going to have a, maybe 20, 15 seconds where you're just going to quiet yourself and allow the Lord to drop a, a thought, a word, a sentence, a scripture verse. Um, drops something in your mind. And then after that 20 seconds, then you're going to tell that other person. Whatever popped into your mind. And if you, don't, if you don't feel comfortable about it, you could just say, well, I don't feel really confident about this. You know, I got a picture. I don't know if this means anything to you. I got a picture of somebody dragging a garbage can out to the curb. But, but I wouldn't be surprised if the other person doesn't say, oh, my word, the Lord's been dealing with me about taking the garbage out of the way of my thinking. You, I mean, that's how good the Holy Spirit is. So... So we're going to wait we're going to see what the Lord puts into our head that we could prophesy to that person. If you don't get anything, you know what you should say? I didn't get anything. Okay, but if, you, but if something comes into your mind, just give them that. I'm, uh, you know, and if it's just something so simple, love, and you just tell them God loves you, <laughs> I mean, that is awesome. What an awesome thing that God loves us. Okay, does everybody have a partner? Tammy, do you? Okay. Okay. Everybody has a partner. There's four of you back there at the <laughs> prophesy over each other. Okay, here we go. Let's let's do this. We're gonna we're just gonna have about 20 seconds. Okay, you guys are talking a lot already, and I'm I'm a little disappointed. Do we have a blow horn sound or something? Who do you? Who do you? Look at me. Okay, stop talking. Stop talking. We're going to just 20, 15 seconds. Can you guys be silent for 15 seconds? Okay, we're going to be quiet for Dusty. Dusty, we're going to be quiet for 15 seconds. And then, okay, here we go. Quiet. Okay, you can go ahead now and share if you got anything to that other person.
Okay, hopefully you could wrap it up here. You, uh, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is, com- um, this is the first Sunday of the month, and we always, like, we always enjoy receiving communion. And uh, the ushers are going to be handing out communion. And so we're, we're remembering to do what Jesus told us to do. And the night before he goes to the cross, he, and, and, oh, and this is so awesome because it's, the, it's separating the old covenant and the new covenant. They've been looking at the new covenant the whole time. They, the, in the old, old Testament, they've been having different feasts, Passover for all the time, You're doing all these things. And then he gets to the night before he's going to the cross and he, and he, he takes the bread and, and he breaks it like he's supposed to do in a Seder. And then um, he just tells them, this is my body. Now to us, we don't, we don't get, the, you guys can go ahead and pass out the, the communion if you would. Thanks, John. You're doing a great job. So he, he's up there, and they're having the Seder that they had been since, the, you know, since Egypt. And then he breaks that bread, and he tells them, this is my body. So to them, they're probably just blown away. This is your body? I, everything we've been doing for these thousands of years, this is you? And so this, this morning, this is the symbol of Christ's body. This, this represents to us the dividing point between the old and new covenant is him going to the cross. So he gave his body for us. So Lord Jesus, as we receive the symbol of your body into our physical bodies this morning, I pray that that we will have a deeper understanding how you, your Holy Spirit lives inside of us. A deeper understanding of the communion that we can have with you. I pray that this will be a supernatural experience. In Jesus' name, amen. So then that same night, he picks up a cup of wine, which is part of the Seder. I think there were three different times they would take a take a sip or a gulp of the, of the wine. And so, so he tells them that night, well, this is my blood. For us, we're like, yeah, we've been receiving communion most of our life. Yeah, this represents Christ's blood. But for them on that night, this would have just been something amazing to, uh, to them. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that this morning we would we would have that same sense of amazement that you were willing to shed your blood for us, that you're God, you're willing to shed your blood for us so that we could come back into right relationship with God the Father, so that we could have your Holy Spirit dwell inside of us, so that we could have continuous grace by the power of your blood. We could have continuous grace so that every time we sin, the Holy Spirit doesn't have to leave, and then we confess, the Holy Spirit comes back. But we have continuous grace through the power of your blood. Help us to just have that seared into our brain. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm curious, how many of you, during the exercise where you prophesied over somebody, said, yeah, something fell into my mind and I gave it to them? How many of you? Okay, good, good. I would encourage you this week to, as you're going to school or going to work or uh, around the house or in the store or at the coffee shop or wherever, be attentive to that. The Holy Spirit is going to drop word, you know, like the janitor. The, you, the Holy Spirit is going to drop words into your mind for you to give to those people, to prophesy over them, to edify them, to exhort them. 
and to comfort them. Okay? Stand with me, please. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And he'll lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you shalom, shalom. There'll be somebody up front that wants to prophesy over you. If you need prayer also, they'll also pray for you. But I encourage you to come forward and we will agree with you in prayer and watch miracles happen. God bless you. We will see you next week. Go Hawks.